Yeah, thank you, Manpreet. Uh, indeed, uh, we had a uh, masterclass from uh, Rupal, and we know that uh, she's been a pioneer in this field, and we are very proud that uh, she had taken us to this uh, stage of uh, refractive surgery. In fact, uh, we call her, you know, grandmother of refractive surgery in India. Wonderfully, you know, explained everything, and things have become very, very simple for us also. For the people who are going to listen to uh, smile as this uh, master class which is going through should learn uh, many things from uh, experienced people. I would not say a complication. I would say these are difficult situations in any surgery and true for a, a smile procedure also. No financial disclosure from my side. As Dr. Mantri talked about uh, and uh, Rupal also, we know that there's a definite learning curve initially when you get initiated into this surgery and satisfaction Fine surgery, as uh, Dr. Rupal Sar told us, because this looks like actual surgery in the cornea rather than uh, LASIK, which is mostly governed by the machine parameters and machines doing everything. We know that suction loss can be sometimes very challenging in a patient undergoing smile procedure. The incidence is very low. In the beginning, it may be around uh, 2% or so. That is what we, I felt in the initial 100 cases. But subsequently, uh, it is hardly there. That means you have understood very correctly the entire procedure and you applied your technique to the patient and this uh, little difficult situation can be avoided easily. As we talked about, it is a very soft docking and uh, it's not like a, in a patient with a LASIK uh, or a femtosecond LASIK where you have a huge amount of section uh, being there. It just accurbates the cornea. And the uh, pressure buildup is so less, <clears throat> and patient can see uh, the green light uh, despite having a suction. The vision is preserved, and that's why you have a good fixation in these cases. What would be the various predisposing factor which can enhance the chances of suction loss happening during the procedure? As we said, that it is a low suction system. So longer suction time, sometimes uh, people inexperienced in the beginning can have much longer. Uh, to take the patient into actual procedure. A patient may be very, very anxious it's because these are patients, young patients, they have never been to any surgical uh, room. In fact, uh, they, this may be the first instances where they lie supine underneath the some system. And it's really terrifying. I've seen myself lying under this, this uh, system can be terrifying. And it's like a, a sort of a people I've seen, they get crazy sometimes. The patient can, young patient can be very anxious. Tight speculum drape is another thing which we have to take care of, uh, especially ILS is coming in there. Conjunctiva getting boggy, as Dr. Rupal uh, nicely uh, described. If you do a multiple uh, suctions, you have a very boggy conjunctiva sometimes. Deep set eyes, small aperture, and most importantly, surgeon's own uh, anxiousness because of inexperience can be a factor here. Therefore, periop counseling is very important for all surgery. This is true for a smile also. You should talk to the patient, make patient comfortable. And uh, it's not periop also. It is during the surgery also. Continuous counseling is important. Speak to the patient, explain. And as far as I'm concerned, I tell them towards the end that this procedure is going to take hardly 28 sec seconds. And that also eases the patient because the procedure is not that long. And 28 seconds can go very fast. And it is very important to explain that green light be off after some time because otherwise they keep searching for green light. That These two points are very important for these patients. What are the management algorithm uh, we have to understand? Uh, not much also because everything is guided by the system. First thing we have to identify the underlying cause and what stage the suction loss has occurred. So if it is within the first 10 seconds of a posterior plane, that is a lenticule cut, you can immediately redock and restart the procedure. So that's the simplest for that. So if you have difficult situation visible, like you have a lot of uh, conjunctiva getting boggy there, or uh, there's a fluid uh, collection happening towards the periphery of a suction the contact lens, and that is increasing or patients moving, you should not proceed uh, at that moment. Stop at that time, make the patient comfortable, and you can restart. The difficulty arises when you have a posterior lenticle occurred more than 10%. Most of the time, we'll have to stop procedure and think of an alternative uh, procedure or wait for a, a second surgery to be done in these patients. In other aspects, that is a lenticle side cut or a cap cut or a cap side cut, 
Well, these are basically anterior uh, dissection or uh, laser procedure happening. You can redock and uh, proceed uh, as per the machine's guidance. So it is only the uh, posterior cut which is important, and that, that you have to be very, very observant to see what stage you had the posterior cut. Let, let me just run one video here. Various factors may contribute to an increased incidence of suction loss related to the machine, surgeon's inexperience, anxious, uncooperative patient, tight speculum or difficult orbital anatomy. In this case, suction loss occurred at the beginning of the procedure due to excessive eye movement of an anxious patient. Preoperative counseling is essential to calm an anxious patient and explain what is expected from the patient during laser application. The patient should be explained that the green fixation light may not be visible during femtosecond laser delivery and the patient should not become anxious and move the eye. The patient was counseled, redocked and retreated uneventfully in the same sitting. The soft docking is based on the principle of accurvation, which minimizes the intraocular pressure rise as well as the tissue distortion during femtosecond laser application. It also allows the patient to maintain fixation throughout the surgical procedure. The low suction system is associated with longer suction times, which predisposes to the intraoperative suction loss. In this case, excessive eye I'm sorry, there's something went wrong. Incidence of suction loss, experience, anxious, uncooperative dental anatomy due to excessive eye movement of essential to calm an anxious patient and explain what is expected from the patient during laser application. The patient should be explained that the green fixation light may not be visible during femtosecond laser delivery and the patient should not become anxious and move the eye. The patient was counseled, redocked and retreated uneventfully in the same sitting. The soft docking is based on the principle of accurvation which minimizes the intraocular pressure rise as well as the tissue distortion during femtosecond laser application. It also allows the patient to maintain fixation throughout the surgical procedure. The low suction system is associated with longer suction times, which predisposes to the intraoperative suction loss. In this case, excessive eye movement by the patient led to suction loss after 2.81 mm of lenticule cut had been completed. The management depends upon the stage at which suction loss occurs. This case was planned for LASIK in the same sitting as suction loss occurred after completion of more than 10% of lenticule cut. The patient regained uncorrected distance visual equity of 2020 after the procedure. I think the outcome after suction loss management uh, can be uh, equally good as you have patient without suction loss also. Only thing the management has to be appropriate and decisions should be taken as per the uh, stage of suction loss happening in these cases. And if you look into a, a management wise, there can be two options. One is uh, look into a stage wise, if you have uh, suction loss happening within the first 10% of uh, posterior cut, you can redo it immediately in the same sitting ways. But if you have gone beyond that, uh, there has been one uh, uh, article recently where they have continued uh, despite the posterior lamellar uh, cut has been more than 10% in the same sitting. And that may have some implications and uh, which we normally don't follow as such. We normally abort the surgery at that stage and look for a second alternative to do a better procedure uh, in our comfortably in these patients after refractive and corneal stability, stability is there in these cases. So immediate redocking sometimes you have a bubble uh, which may be a uh, guide to your uh, fixation and centration, but with the bubble also, the energy settings can get uh, altered and you may have undercorrection in these cases also. 
So you have to really look into that aspect or you, some people might want to wait for one to two hours to get uh, such these bubble to disappear. But that also makes things more, more difficult because your centration may be difficult uh, as such in these cases also. Whatever we have done, uh, it's few cases. Uh, if you have a patient where you have a uh, suction loss happening after the posterior plane has been dissected uh, by laser comfortably, we have redocked immediately and uh, it has been quite successful also. The good uh, visual outcome has been seen in all uh, cases of suction loss without having to go through the difficult situation and explain patient your vision may not regain. So in all smile procedure, there has been no uh, vision threatening complications uh, till date. As you say, this is the algorithm which we talk about. Uh, if you have a suction loss, you can think of uh, various uh, ways of uh, redefining the procedure for patient. Subsequently, we can plan for a trans-epithelial PRK once uh, established there, or you can do a LASIK uh, flap-based surgery in these cases, or we can try a refractive you know, lenticular extraction on a like a pseudo smile procedure for these patients on the same sitting or a similar neck sitting also. This is our video, uh, which is there American Academy site. People can see and watch the entire suction loss uh, video in those cases. The second aspect uh, which I would like to cover is, which uh, Dr. Rupal also talked about, the dissection part, which we understand may be the uh, deterrent to uh, many young people. They might find this is more difficult to really find the anterior and posterior plane in these cases. And the incidence of uh, such uh, Inexperienced uh, dissection can decrease with the experienced uh, surgeon going through uh, many, many uh, similar steps being done. So always uh, we try anterior dissection first, then do a posterior dissection, and Dr. Rupal very nicely showed. So two situations can occur. One, first, you have done a good anterior dissection, but you struggle to see the posterior dissection because of maybe thin lenticule, or you may have a bubble which not been uh, correctly placed at that area, or some additions are there on the incision site or you have done a uh, directly went to the posterior dissection first, then you are try to struggle to see another posterior plane. In that way, you can damage the stoma and cause more problems. So all complication related to a uh, cap can start at this stage only. Once you have a difficult understanding of a plane, all complications start happening in these cases. Incidence will decrease with the time, with your experience. And if you have a difficult dissection, most importantly, we talked about delayed uh, visual recovery for these patients. Suboptimal visual quality may be there, but we have seen that these patients also regain good quality of vision as time passes. That is the advantage of smile. As time passes, the visual quality and visual equity keeps improving. This was my first case of uh, not uh, able to dissect the anterior or posterior plane correctly. And we looked into a case with anti-segment OCT to see exactly where we have uh, dissected. So we could find that we have dissected posteriorly in this patient directly. And we had done a lot of damage to the stroma also because trying to find another posterior plane in these cases. And with anti-segment OCT, we could uh, appreciate the, lan uh, the lenticule attached to the cap. So this is a cap lenticular addition. And we use a Sinsky hook to uh, delineate the cap uh, the lenticule from the cap in these cases. Once you make a little bit of a, a crescentic flap here, you can subsequently enlarge the flap and do a dissection subsequently. This is what one video I like to show, how we manage these cases of a cap lenticular addition. This is the incision opening which you do. And this was a, a, two, a three millimeter incision. And you can see I'm dissecting, then trying to go in a dissection in a proper manner. So this is the time we're trying to go posteriorly. There's no space. And this is a space which is uh, uh, very, very clear. This is what had gone wrong. In the beginning only, we have gone posteriorly. With, you can see the little bit of uh, you know, space there. So that was a crescentic uh, sign which we missed out. So we make a flap with the reverse tip of a sharper tip of a spatula, then go anteriorly. So making this flap is very, very important. If you just, I take you back there. You can see here, uh, this is what uh, we do it. Once you raise the flap, you have to go anterior to that flap and this will give you anterior dissection very, very clearly. And you can do a same surgery uh, as you routinely do for your cases. In fact, nowadays, uh, if you get to a posterior plane in the beginning, you know that uh, you, are, you are not going to uh, damage the tissue. Complete the posterior dissection first, then make a flap and go anteriorly. So this is a posterior dissection first technique can also be used. 
This is the meniscus sign we had described. This is the anterior plane dissection first, and this is the posterior plane dissection. Both should be separate. And if you just nudge it the, uh, uh, the tissue, you can make a crescent here. And this crescent makes sure that you have dissected both the planes, anteriorly and posteriorly. Now we'll go anterior dissection first. The crescent will be behind the, the line of uh, demarcation, will be underneath the spatula. That means you're anterior. Once you're posterior, this line of demarcation will be anterior to the spatula. And that makes that you are in a correct plane. So sometimes you can make a double crescent so that you can uh, rexes the entire uh, lenticule very, very effectively. People who do no dissection technique, I think the uh, double crescent uh, procedure is much better for uh, separating the lenticule in an excess manner. Other uh, complication which can be cap tear or side care extension is normally associated with difficult dissection or a cap lenticular addition happening in these cases. This is what one case I had a, a tear in the cap. So luckily it was a paracentral. And this is the only case I've seen in my entire uh, last five years, you know, smile with time. And this is the extension of uh, your side curve because of, uh, and Dr. Rupal was saying, if your fulcrum is uh, not in center, if you de deviate from central fulcrum, then you can have this uh, side curve extension also. This is the algorithm of a difficult lenticular dissection published in IGO. People can go through that and clearly explain how to manage the difficult lenticular extension in these cases. So learning comes is there, but uh, I think with the experience, you get to a, a stage where you don't think of any complication in your surgery and same holds true for smile. And the outcome, despite having a difficult situation has been uh, reported to be good and we have seen it is absolutely same as normal cases. Thank you, uh, Manpreet, for uh, involving me in this particular uh, beautiful uh, I see or smile.